Hi there, I'm Ruben Ruffel and here we are at my restaurant r Co in the Valdivier State with Pescaluna, the brand behind the Africa's Greatest series. Pescaluna catch some of the highest quality fish around and they deliver straight from their dock in Hout Bay to your door. It's the perfect day to introduce you to our latest initiative where we find and create Africa's greatest fish dishes by partnering with Africa's greatest local and craft brands. Working with you, we are finding the best local gin, beer and wine brands to incorporate and pair with our meals to create a unique contemporary pesca twist on our traditional recipes. You get to vote on who you think deserves to be named Africa's greatest for 2021 and as a reward, we have some incredible prizes in store. We're not only giving away these recipes in meal kits as our medium prizes for voting, but our grand prize is where Africa's greatest comes together. Hosting you in an exclusive Airbnb experience, I will be your family's private chef for the evening. Vote for your favorite brands on Instagram and Facebook and stand a chance to win or order some succulent seafood on pescaluna.com. Let's get into it. Follow me. Right, first up is our hake and wine recipe. Now, I'm going to pan fry the hake in a combination of butter and olive oil and I'm serving it with a zesty couscous. I'm using pearl couscous, the slightly bigger one, and I'm gonna infuse that with zest of lemon, garlic, parsley, and a bit of heat by adding some uh, chopped uh, chilies to it. Then I'm making a white wine and cream sauce, shenan, cream, I'm gonna cook that up, add a little bit of butter just to enrich it um, even more and the tomatoes I'm just gonna slightly poach in some olive oil and I'm adding rooibos tea to my tomatoes to give it that extra South African flavor. Cool, let's see what's in here. Wow, really nicely packaged. The hake is long line hake, which is normally the better quality. I like the way it's packaged. Sometimes you get it in sort of uh, vacuum sealed uh, packets. And out of experience, when you vacuum seal fish, they tend not to keep that long. Uh, and this way of wrapping it in sort of grease proof paper really preserves the freshness of the fish much longer. Let's have a look. Mm. So just beautiful fillets. Um, I mean, really top quality hike and I love it. So let's get cooking. I'm gonna start with the pearl couscous. Now, I know it's something that a lot of people might not be cooking a lot with. I mean, I think we're all more familiar with the normal couscous, the finer one. This uh, couscous, the pearl couscous, I think it's got a bit more of a better mouthfeel. It's almost a bit more creamy. So it pairs really well um, with this dish and specifically with the hike. Um, I've started to boil some water. So that's about a cup and a half. A little bit of salt in the water. Bring it up to boil and then I add a cup of this couscous uh, to the boiling water. And then I just want to slowly cook it for about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, now for the aromatics that's gonna go into the couscous. Now I like these flavors. This is maybe a bit of a, um, a, a slight Italian slant to it. We're serving this egg with white wine. Now the flavors that I, that I think really works well with especially a, a Chenin Blanc is, is lemon and lemon goes with so many um, ingredients, obviously works well with fish, but I'm also using the zest. And I'm using the zest of this whole lemon. So whenever you use a, a good microplane or a zester, 
Uh, what you don't want to do is get too deep into the skin. Obviously, then you get to the pith. And that's the bit that um, adds a bit of bitterness to whatever you're cooking. And that's not what we want. We after just, just the skin. So you get quite a bit out of there. And then I also want the juice, but I'm just going to cut it in half now and I'll squeeze it out when I need it. I'm just going to mix all the aromatics in there. So the zest goes in there quickly. Garlic clove. Just going to crush it like that and then I'm going to chop it up finely. So this will give that couscous a really lovely sort of fresh taste. Now I like dishes where you have, uh, especially when it comes to fish and, and hikes specifically, it's such a clean fish um, that the flavors that you add to it really need to complement it. And uh, a combination of something that's fresh and rich, like sort of the creamy sauce that we're going to add to it, just, uh, you know, goes well with the flavors of hike and everything that's going to be on that plate. Okay, garlic. Okay, next up, just for a little bit of heat, and look, if you like um, heat and you're fine with it, leave this, the seeds in there. Uh, for this recipe today, I'm gonna take the seeds out. It will give a little bit of bite, but not too much. Okay, so just get the seeds out there. Okay, and then just a light chop again. Doesn't need to be too fine, kind of like a rough chop is fine. Ah, that should do it. Okay, flat leaf parsley. Now, you know, your normal curly parsley also works well. I just find flat leaf parsley has just got, you know, kind of like a cross between a little bit of uh, that celery, celery flavor. Um, uh, I think it looks nicer too. So, just get it off the stalks. Uh, a little bit more. And again, I'm just gonna give it a rough chop, not too fine. Uh, I find when you chop herbs, especially uh, basil, uh, coriander, parsley, the finer you chop it, the more sort of it loses its flavor. So a rough chop is fine, and I think it looks much better as well. Just like so. That's perfect. Okay. Cool, so how you know when, especially your pearl couscous is done, uh, for me they've got like a little bit of a pasta sort of uh, al dente t texture uh, and they swell up a little bit. Um, and you can just test them by having a quick taste. Perfect. The longer you cook them, the softer they're gonna get. So you don't want them crunchy, but they must be just cooked. Okay, then for the next step, um, for the aromatics, for the couscous, this is quite important. You know, I, when it comes to temperature, heating up the oil, olive oil especially, sometimes people heat it up too much. I just want to heat it up very lightly. Got a sore spot here. So when it comes to using quality olive oil, 
as soon as you heat it up too much, as soon as it starts to smoke, it, it basically loses all its qualities, it loses its flavor. So you just wanna uh, heat it up very lightly and then I'm gonna add the aromatics to it. So what that does, uh, it brings out the flavor of the garlic. Obviously you want to cook the garlic a little bit. The lemon, the parsley, it just brings all those flavors together really beautifully before we're gonna add some lemon juice to it. Okay, so I'm basically watching the oil so it doesn't heat up too much. Um, okay, that's fine. Okay, and then it just the lemon juice. Okay, so it's got a really lovely smell, and now all I want to do is um, mix all of that through our couscous. You will see if it sort of like cools down, again the same as pasta, it will sort of like start to stick together. So, this mixture just goes in there. Okay, and then I'm just gonna fold it through. I'll check for seasoning again afterwards. There's not much in terms of salt in there. Uh, but again, when it comes to salt seasoning especially, I mean, you can kind of start early with a little bit of salt and towards the end of the dish, because there's so many elements to, to this dish uh, that you are gonna be adding salt to. So I'll just leave it as is for now. Obviously, I have a quick taste. Mm. Really delicious. That nice zesty flavors, but still sort of creamy in terms of mouthfeel. So, okay, we'll keep that warm for now. Then we're gonna move over to the tomatoes. So the same concept. Um, I'm using olive oil again and this is uh, basically just to, I don't even want to call it poaching, it's basically just taking tomatoes and enhancing their flavor in a way. You know, you can use the rosa tomatoes, uh, the tiny cherry tomatoes are also fine, or even if you have um, smaller sort of plum tomatoes, they work beautifully too. Um, so like I said before, we're just gonna heat the olive oil very lightly. But what I want to add is just, just some garlic. I'm gonna leave it in the skin. I'm just gonna crush it so it releases all that flavor. And to the oil, I'm gonna add some sea salt. Okay, so these tomatoes, I'm just gonna cut them in half. What happens is if you leave them sort of um, uh, kind of uncut, what happens to the inside of the tomato, it sort of um, gets really warm. Uh, and unless you make a cut in it, uh, you know, it's nice maybe when you eat it and it kind of like explodes, but I think what I want is kind of some of that flavor of the olive oil to actually get into the tomato because that's a much nicer flavor. Um, and normally if you make this for any other dish you can 
um, you can kind of allow it to, to cool down. It's almost like what I want to do here. So again, uh, combinations of flavors, but also temperatures. So the tomatoes, I'll just uh, cool down to room temperature and that's how we're going to serve it with the dish. Almost there. Okay, I think that should be enough for our dish. And then also, like I mentioned earlier, I'm adding some rooibos. Um, I mean, rooibos, especially in terms of cooking, is really one of those things that you can you can do. A lot of people do use it for desserts. Uh, it works well even when you do kind of dry dishes, but uh, especially with this fish, when you have a creamy element and a citrus element, it works beautifully. You can sort of like start to smell the rooibos, but obviously it's going to still be in that uh, oil for quite some time. I'm going to add the tomatoes to the oil now and what will happen some of the juices of the tomato will come out because of the heat and the salt and the sort of uh, rooibos tea flavors will kind of like develop a little bit more okay so straight into there nothing much nothing else happening they're not going to go back onto the stove i just want to make sure they're all nice and submerged in the oil and then just keep that to one side Okay, and then I want to get to our creamy white wine sauce. So I'm, I'm using uh, some Chenin Blanc and cream. Very simple, uh, just those two ingredients. Normally, if you make some of these creamy sauces, you start with frying onion slowly, you add butter. Uh, but I want to keep it as simple as possible. And the nice thing about doing it this way is you're actually picking up the, the flavors um, and the characteristics of the wine um, even better without adding all the other ingredients. So let's do sort of, I'm doing um, almost half and half in terms of quantity. Okay, I'm gonna bring that to the boil, reduce it slightly, check for seasoning, and then we should be done. And while that's happening, I think we can get our fish ready now. I kind of, obviously, you wanna prepare all the ad additions to the dish first, before you get to the fresh element. And the element that you need to take the most time, I think fish, uh, and especially something as delicate as hike, um, you know, hike for many years has been sort of uh, the fish that you can buy in, like I remember in good sort of fish and chip shops. Uh, we focused a lot on fish like Cabo Yo, uh, Cape Salmon, uh, but nowadays we're quite proud of, of the hike that, that we get. Uh, but the quality is the main thing, it's the, main, it's the very most important thing. Um, this is a very delicate fish. It's, um, it doesn't really take a lot in terms of uh, the cooking. And by that I mean uh, the cooking has to be kept very simple. Now, for me, what goes well with fish is, is butter. You know, that flavor that sort of like added to the fish, I think brings out the flavor, a touch of lemon juice, um, and nothing more than that. So this is all about technique so it's not about ingredients for me it's about the technique so I'm gonna for our portion I'm just gonna cut it the nice thing about these fillets as well I mean they bake really beautiful in an oven on a tray so I mean there's many many ways of, of sort of like cooking it but for my dish today pan frying um, I'm gonna use just the nice fillets like that. And then I just want to season them.
both sides. Okay. For the skin, I'm just going to give it just a touch of flour. It's just to sort of um, uh, prevent it from sticking to the pan and it will help the skin to crisp up ever so slightly. I think we like it when it, if you leave skin on fish that you really need to try and uh, take your time to crisp up the skin. So it's basically a very light dusting. Okay, that should do it. Check on my sauce quickly. Mm. Okay, just a quick taste. Mm. Lovely. Just add a bit of salt for now. Get the temperature bit down. I just want to reduce it basically by one third. So it will start to thicken a little bit, but it won't go sort of like too thick. It will still stay nice and light. Okay, so I think we're ready to cook our fish. Just get this out of the way. I always say, why make it difficult when it comes to cooking fish? Use a non-stick pan. A non-stick pan just makes it so much easier. Um, and uh, let me seat that up quickly. What I do is, I do a combination of butter and olive oil. Now, like I mentioned before, butter just, I mean, when it comes, it's a no-brainer to cook uh, fish with butter. Now, what happens if you only use butter, and I'm using unsalted butter because you don't want um, additional sort of saltiness after you've sort of seasoned your fish, so unsalted butter. Uh, the reason we use oil in combination with butter is to prevent the butter from uh, burning. So the butter, you'll get that really nice sort of stage where butter goes into brown butter, really nice nutty flavor. And then very quickly after that, it goes to burnt. Um, this just sort of like helps the butter to kind of retain that it goes to the nuttiness without actually burning. You still need to control the temperature though. So olive oil. So I'll start with olive oil first. Get our pan back on the heat. So, you know, again, when it comes to pan frying, I start with medium high temperature and then I build it up. So I don't start with a smoking uh, hot pan because uh, we are going to cook the fish fully in the pan. I'm not going to seal it off and then finish it off in the, in the oven. So I want to start with a medium high temperature, get some color on the fish, control the temperature at that stage. Uh, if you see it's too high, um, you put it a little bit lower. That's the thing when it comes to recipes where um, you've got to basically see what happens in front of you and you have to react to that. A recipe doesn't always give you everything. Okay, so I think that's hot enough. Fish goes into the pan. That's just the right amount of sizzle that you want. So what I want to do is I want to get the skin nicely crisped up before I start adding the butter. And the butter is the process where it sort of like adds, again, adds to the flavor and it helps to get that nice golden color on the skin and, and most of the fish. Okay, so I'm gonna check it now quickly. And go a bit more. Yeah, I would say about two minutes on the skin. 
And again, at this stage, just check, check the temperature. For me, that's perfect. I can see the browning. Uh, it's happening in the right time. And it's almost ready for me to add the butter. So I'm going to add the butter quickly. Now this is what you want to see. You see sort of like uh, the butter starts foaming. It starts to react with the oil and the juices of the fish. And this is the time I want to quickly flip it around. So it's important to know exactly when you want to put the butter in. And again, if you see that kind of smokiness in your pan, reduce the heat. It's fine. So that's exactly the color that you want. It's nice and crispy. And at this stage, it's also fine to keep on turning the fish. And that allows sort of the fish to cook nice and evenly. Okay, quick check on my sauce. Mm. That really smells delicious. I mean, you can smell the wine. I think the cream, I think cream really makes everything better. It, it actually just enhances the flavor of the wine. Mm. Yeah. That's perfect, so I'm just going to keep that warm as well. Okay, now I'm just going to turn the heat right down. Almost to its lowest setting, and now all I want is for the fish to, to get to the perfect temperature and to cook. But it's pretty close. So we're almost ready to plate up. So you can get that nice garlicky flavors together with a um, kind of warm smells of rooibos tea. So that's done, our couscous. Just check on that. Ah, that just, you know, that zesty sort of um, smell that you get when you use the zest of the, the lemon and the juice. Just works really beautiful. And of course the olive oil Again, when you have this great quality olive oil, you know, no need to cook it, no need to heat it up too much. I can just sort of already see how these flavors are going to go together. So that's done. Now, as you know, hike has got a very sort of delicate uh, flesh. You can see can almost just leave it in this hot pan and it will just keep on cooking. I think we're ready to plate up. Okay, so zesty couscous. I want to like just create a little bed for the hike. The idea is that you have to sort of cut into your fish and then get a little bit of that couscous to go with it as well. That goes on top. And then our Shannon cream just goes around this dish. Adds that lovely richness, 
and you know works really well with that sort of um, citrusy flavors lemony flavors that's in the couscous plus what we have in this tomato but i want the tomato and some of that lovely oil because that's where you'll pick up the sort of rooibos tea flavors Finish it off some more lemon zest. And you have got some white pepper. Lovely. There we have it. Our pan fried hake from Pescaluna. Very great, I mean, amazing quality. Couscous with lemon zest, parsley, chili, uh, Chenin Blanc cream, and rooibos tea tomatoes.